Dude, thank God I'm not live. <laughs> That's always what I think about, is thank God I'm not live. Fire. We're officially ready. I'm good. I'm not fucking anything up. I probably will this time. I feel like I've fucked something up most episodes I've done. And it's just a matter of not fucking it up bad enough to like actually ruin the episode. <laughs> so yeah, at that point, just call it a freestyle and then you get more respect. You're not wrong. Yeah, I should. I should start like <laughs> releasing them as like artistic episodes. So, like if I forget to turn on a light, it's like, no, this is just a black and white episode. <laughs> like you're good. That's what you get today. <laughs> Unintentionally on purpose. It could be, dude. Well, thank you, my dude. Welcome, welcome to my palace, my my estate. I've been trying to think of fun places to call this. I think castle is a good one to work on. I think That's it cool. feels like a castle. It's yeah, guarded cool. by felines. Yeah. Full grown stone background, everything, yeah. It is, dude. It's yeah. sick. I want it to be kind of cozy. It was important. Like I felt like the the first couple episodes I did a couple months ago were just like like bland. And it, like, it wasn't a space I wanted to sit in and be in. So when I was making this, I was like, yeah, where is someone that I want to be and somewhere that other people are gonna hopefully want to be? Yeah, it's cozy too. Uh, fire. I'm glad that worked out. But we're here today. Got a couple of things to talk about. Um, I'm realizing I numbered the episode wrong. This is not episode two, it's episode three. There's my mistake. <laughs> not bad enough to ruin it, though. Not, not a math pod. Uh, <laughs> dude, thank God. <laughs> um, but, so I've been having fun going back to like the beginning of stuff and figuring out where this whole thing got started. I've been obsessed with the idea that like none of us planned to end up involved in these things. Like I think if you ask a five-year-old, like, what are you going to do when you grow up? Like, no one's like, I'm going to be in a band and make music in my bedroom. Yeah. Where does this begin for you? So I know like now you're into vocals, you have guitar, there's design, there's photo, there's a hundred different artistic avenues. Mm -hmm. Where does, yeah, where does this kind of spawn from as a kid? Um, I mean... Uh, music wise it's ever since i first heard i think it was ironically enough i think it was like one of the first guitar hero games i oh, had yeah dude where i was like i i think i remember specifically hearing i don't want to stop by ozzy osbourne yep. and i was like that sounds cool let me try to do that and i begged for a guitar for christmas got it got a hold of it was like what do i do but yeah. it was it was kind of like one of those things where i never really took lessons for anything i kind of was like always interested in figuring things out for myself so it was like a definitely a trial and error for like a few years, but it was definitely one of those things where I was like, it, you just discover for the first time and you're like just amazed by it. Interesting. Um, but, as, but as long as like, as far as like photo, everything too, it's like, I'm just like constantly scatterbrained where it's like, I'm just always getting bored with one thing for a minute. Just like, Hey, let me try something else. See how that goes. But that's just me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you hear me swing this just a little closer to yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I think Guitar Hero doesn't get enough credit for what it did. Like, I think no. even for me, it was like it didn't necessarily teach me music or make me love it, but it taught me that I could learn something and it gave me this fundamental idea of what a guitar was and how it operated. That's interesting. That like, yeah, I wonder how many people went back to that. I can't, there's some drummer I know who learned drums on Guitar Hero and I'm forgetting who it was, uh, but that's OK. I mean, it makes sense because they had like those drum set like controllers where like you actually had to play it was close yeah yeah it was close i mean not like the real thing but close enough to yeah. where it's like fuck i'm actually doing a real <laughs> thing now yeah you could imagine using that as like training wheels to get going yeah um so then you learn that is guitar then your first instrument after that like where's Te the first step into yeah actually doing it it was my first instrument and then i always had a fascination with like drums after that too so it was like i after a while started to try to learn drums as well like got an electronic kit learned on that and never really drums? got huh do you still play drums <sighs> i try <laughs> no idea okay <laughs> i try add it to the list um, of things i didn't know you did that's awesome <laughs> yeah i it was never like a big thing for me like i got good enough to work and play along to stuff sure. like semi-fine yeah but never enough to be like oh i can play in front of people or like actually go to the studio and track on drums sure kind of thing it was more of like i just got bored let me try something new gotcha so those yeah. are the first two and then are either of them like serious? Are you starting to look at bands at that point? Or is it just like in your garage figuring it out? No, it was in my guitar, like in my guitar, in my garage for the longest time. Hell I yeah. didn't, I wasn't in a band until, I mean, when I got my guitar, I was probably in fourth grade. Okay. Um, but I was never in a band until like 2012. So it was definitely like a seven ish year gap between the two. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. What's like the, what are some memories of that process of like, I don't know. I, my first i'm not a guitar player i can play it well enough to have covered three songs in my life and there's videos <laughs> of those but like that's about as far as it got uh but there's like a moment where that guitar hits your hands where it's there's just so much happening and it takes so long to get confident and comfortable and then to go from there to then producing art from it is a huge road what was that process like or do you remember it all or did it um, yeah it wasn't um, overnight i don't remember much yeah it's definitely a long road like 
again, like I took pretty much no lessons. So everything I just figured on my own. So it was definitely like a slower process than, you know, as to like taking lessons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely like for a while, just trying to learn the same, like two songs for like three years like just not really getting a grasp of it but yeah. it was after a while where i felt comfortable with those i was like okay i started learning the fundamentals on my own of like uh bar chords uh where each note is on the fretboard uh where like what root notes are and yep. like how to build everything off that so um yeah it was long and treacherous for sure like definitely a lot of if i were to go, if there were any videos of it, i'd go back and probably like really cringe that's at exactly it. what i do yeah yeah, yeah i definitely have that reaction <laughs> but i don't know i think you have to start somewhere uh and i think it's i don't know there's like something fun in that process of the world being such a open place for you to go explore and like there's an unlimited amount of stuff for you can do exactly but i'm interested that you taught yourself this and it was kind of a self-driven journey mm -hmm. uh, and i think for me it was definitely yeah has been the same process of watching a youtube video and just sitting there for way too long i could have just asked for help and got it done in a tenth of the time but i'm yeah. hard-headed and stubborn and that's not how i'm gonna choose to operate yeah like i never know i didn't i didn't know what tabs were for like years on end so i was really, like you said watching okay. youtube videos like okay he has his hand there he mm -hmm. moves it to this string mm -hmm. at this part and you know etc yeah and it was just literally like <laughs> what is he doing i have no i don't even know what i'm looking at so yeah. Like, yep. but yeah it was man it's it's a journey <laughs> for me that's like the the, the memories the muscles that i built up in sports then are then what propel that self-learning where it's yeah. like i for me it's soccer i think for you it's baseball it's like mm -hmm. the the fundamental foundation of your learning yep uh and i think it's interesting that like yeah this these skills i learned as a four-year-old being out there kicking around you know 19 of us chasing one single ball and pretending that it was a sport uh and like somehow that then is relevant when i'm 16 years old and picking up a camera and trying to learn it again like uh, yeah how is it i assume yeah you're the same where you identify kind of as an athlete and then this became another application of those practice skills yeah for me it was kind of like the equivalent of like okay you're on a pitcher you're in a mound like you can't really sit there and look at the ball and look at the seams to you know where you want to grip a two seam or a cutter or a sinker like you yeah. have to like have the feel for it mm -hmm. um so i kind of applied that to guitar as well whereas like obviously you're looking at the fretboard when you're playing and you're able to tell what you're looking at but at the same time you want to also develop the sense of like okay, my hands are in the third fret, my hands are in the eighth fret, I'm on the 12th, et cetera. So it's like, it, to me, I kind of applied the same kind of mentality or not mentality, I guess, kind of like fundamental of, of that. Um, same thing with like, you're a runner at first, you're taking a lead. You don't want to be too far off to where you get picked off. You don't want to be too close where if you have to get a good jump to steal second, you're too slow. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to have the feel of like where exactly you are to have like a safe distance to go back if you're going to get picked off. So it's like, to for me, everything with music as as far as that goes like has that same mentality that's interesting uh you mentioned the like um the feel aspect and i think it's interesting that yeah you decided that instead of studying the best way to hold a baseball you said i just have to throw a certain amount of pitches and eventually i'll start to grip this and understand how it works uh, and then it builds into yeah a run around first is similar to this problem i have to solve in this song because i need a yeah whatever yeah um, Oh, I had a brain fart there. I had a great question for you. <laughs> Dude, I'm having brain farts left and right. So like, that's like, that's the yeah, name of the game right now. It's a exactly. really weird, like, yeah, pretending it's a normal conversation. It is. I've been like, I've genuinely enjoyed that we, that I get to chat with people and like put down our phones and like chat. It's yeah. very rare that you get to like actually sit down and like, I love you. I haven't seen you in too long. And I don't know when I would have seen you if we didn't sit down today. Yeah, <laughs> this exactly. happened as well. So, Even though we live like two minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> dude, it's far. It's a long journey. Dude. It's treacherous. Dude, like I said, that traffic on the way. Like, it was gnarly, re dude. The rest stop was full. So the weather's I literally had to... horrific, dude. It's like 50 degrees and almost raining outside. I had that tour Gatorade bottle ready to mm -hmm. go. Like Everyone needs one, though. But um, yeah, I think the other part of sports that's fascinating in the, is like learning to work with teammates. So I was talking, I think with Jay, it came up that like to be in a band, it's not just being able to play the guitar it's being able to play the guitar and be in a room with these five other people yep. and then live with them for a month in this tight space yep. and like that process of learning to work with people that you don't always love or learning to put those differences aside but it's different because like in uh for me in soccer it's like i can not like my goalie and still defend for him i think if you're in a band it, you can't not like someone like there's a yeah. another level of commitment that it requires and it, yeah, it's a really incredible skill set and an incredible thing when you find, yeah, five people that can work together in that room. Yeah, because, like, in a band, like, you have four or five people where everyone needs to be pulling, like, 
you don't have to be how do I wear this? It's like everything has to mesh together, like you said, very well. Yeah. Whether it's your personalities, your musical abilities, uh, your tastes, like uh, your open mindedness of other things. Like as far as like a team goes, it's like you have like eight or nine other like individual entities that all are like different personalities. But like at the same time, like it doesn't need to mesh all that well. You just got to play. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and music is definitely different where you got to have like, that camaraderie between all of you to make everything work smoothly. And if it's, there's no camaraderie there, it's, it's going to flop. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, you kind of were talking about, like, I think you were trying to kind of say it has to all be equal and everyone has to do the same. And you kind of pause and you're like, wait, no, everyone has different roles. And I think that's where the team thing comes back. Yeah, where- Cause like, you know, and not everybody in the band has to be like a songwriter, yep. you know, um, not everyone in the band has to be like good with your, like, visuals your content mm-hmm. not everyone in the band has to be like now everyone has to be able to drum good like yeah yep. it, everyone has their own roles and but at the same time like your personalities have to mesh well for mm-hmm. everything to work smoothly and like a well oiled machine i think the um other interesting piece there is just the the human element like we yeah. can get along today but by the end of the season when we're losing and things aren't going well like after the show and things don't go well like those are the times where you really test these relationships. I mean, yeah. being in a band has so many of those moments uh, of just, yeah, travel and tour and late nights and money spent and just so much yeah. bullshit that you have to go through to end up where you want to be. Yeah, like in a band, there's no off season. Yeah. A- everything yeah. is go, go, go. Yeah. Whether, like, sports, like, baseball, I, okay, end of October, I can say tell this guy to fuck off for, like, five mm-hmm. months, but I'll see him again in the spring. Yeah. But, like, in, in a band, it's like, there, you can't. Like, yeah. it's... There's no breaks. I think the flip side, though, is that it's a, a place where you can go and express your, like, I think for me in soccer, there is, like, there's the physical lines. And once you are inside of these lines, nothing else matters, and there's a physical barrier. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to then apply that also to a band where it's, like, you lack the physical line around the field. There's not necessarily that. But there is a sense of, like, you can go to this place and have a release from everything. Or, yeah, for me, it's, like, I can, uh, there's a freedom in knowing that, like, I can miss this shot and my life is fine, or I make the shot, and my life is still fine. Mm-hmm. And there's that same freedom I find in music videos of like, eh, I want to make a great thing, but at least if I don't, my life is still good. And that mm-hmm. allows me to then make better things because I'm not worried about things going bad. And somehow being able to like bring those physical lines of a soccer field with me to set is a really helpful like s- tool, I guess. Yeah, I have that same, yeah, I think the same thing where it's like um, from someone playing a show, like, once you're across that out of bounds line, mm-hmm. nothing else matters. Like yeah. everything has to stay out of like, you have to keep everything personal away. Like your time right now is to focus on putting on a good show, making sure your voice is right, making sure uh, your guitars are in tune, you're like your every, everything. So it's like, I, I would agree that like, I, I do think the same thing where, like you said, we're like, man, I'm <laughs> you're good no I yeah no it's like I, I i totally agree with what you're saying it's like you know once once you're in that show it's go time like you focus on that don't focus on anything else but like like you said too it's like you know once once it's the off season it's the off season i think the problem with that though is like when you're when you're on a baseball field it's like yeah i can forget about this off field problem because i just have to throw a baseball mm-hmm. when you're on stage singing words you wrote from that place of emotion how can you leave that thing at the door and just focus on being on stage where it's like what you're doing on stage is tied to that place of heart. And I think separating those two eh, seems really complicated it, in a way. No. Cause um, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if this thing I apply to sports, but like if it's like something I'm writing about, that's something I'm going to carry with me always. Mm-hmm. Um, but necessarily it's not necessarily like not focusing on that on the stage It's more so like the outside noise, like um, as far as like um, any like, logistical problems with mm-hmm. the band um or are we gonna drop like or is there's our problems gonna evolve into the set no we're gonna have our problems but on the set uh, where we're playing the set it's not gonna exist yeah kind of thing yeah the show must go on and I guess yeah the, the game's gonna happen no matter what exactly uh, like if you pitcher and catcher get into a fight in the locker room like you still got a game <laughs> to play yeah. like uh good transition there my yeah. one of my other notes here is that there's no such thing as a perfect fastball uh which again i I find comfort in, well, I don't know, in the music video context, sorry, in the baseball context, there's no such thing as a perfect fastball and that, like, Mm-mm. it could have been thrown faster, it could have been placed better by some millimeter, or yep. it could have been a curveball. 
Yeah. Like, it, it's possible that you're just completely going down the wrong alley. And I think in a music video context, to me, there's that same problem sometimes of like, man, I'm working so hard on getting this color of blue right, but should it have just been black? Should it, there just not have been a light there in the first place? And that can be both freeing of this idea of infinite possibilities and also overwhelming because it's like, fuck, is everything always wrong? Is there ever a right thing? How did you, yeah, how did that unfold? I know you're a pitcher, so I'm sure you're really stressing, yeah, the placement of the pitch and getting the miles per hour up one more miles per hour. How is that the same or different to, yeah, being on stage or writing a song? It's like, fuck, can this song be better? Is this the complete wrong chorus that I just wrote here? Um, As far as, like, playing a show for me, as far as, like, having a, if I threw this fastball, like, bottom left corner, or should I throw it, like, top right, yeah. you know? Um, for me, it's like, can I have executed this part live better? Can yeah. I have um, been more warmed up for the show? Can I have been more interactive with the crowd? It, it, it all falls into that. Um, and songwriting ability is like, at least when, you, when you're recording a song, you have infinite possibility. Like you said, can I make this blue? Should I leave it black? Or can I try other colors? Like you have the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with recording music too. So, um, But in the end, you, you think you you think you figured it out like okay i had this right shade of blue i'm good to go and then like another month rolls by and you're looking back at it and you're like fuck it probably would have been better if i did this instead every and that's time, every yeah time. so like that's the same thing for me if i'm looking back at videos of me playing shows yeah. um when we recorded music it's like you know this part sounded so sick but like sometimes live i play it like this and yeah. i'm like that probably would have sounded better if i did that in the first place yeah um so yeah that it all ties into the same of like you know, I'm facing a left-handed hitter. I have a righty. I'm a righty pitcher. I have a two-seamer that breaks away. Should I have thrown outside to make him chase? Should I throw inside to jam him? Mm -hmm. And in the end, like even if you got the out, it's like I feel like I could have had an easier execution on this. How do you find peace in that? I think that for me, there's some peace in the in the grind of it. Like I I find peace in the process of trying to perfect it. There's something calming in that process. But there's the flip side of that is like yeah, I'm accepting that nothing I do is perfect and everything can be better. And that means that everything is bad. Like, is that, is that the opposite there? No. Cause even if something's not perfect, it'll sound, it may not sound good to you, but like to someone else, it might sound amazing. Yeah. Um, there's imperfections in every perfection. Yeah. In my opinion. So like nothing you do is going to be perfect, but it doesn't mean it's not a good product. Like to your eyes, yeah. like to your eyes, if you had like, you you color graded this one photo like a a shade of red mm -hmm. per se. You may have felt like it was too red. In reality, it's not. Everyone else is like, dude, that's a perfect tone. But and you're inside, you're like, yeah. dude, this doesn't like. I don't like this. I, I think that's the weird part in sports. There's the once I throw the pitch, I can no longer change that pitch. Mm -hmm. When the context of that red, I can change that red forever. I have unlimited access to that red. Yeah. And even once I send it to the client, like I probably could send them a final bit. Okay, like, hey, no, this is actually update this change the youtube link yeah uh but it's kind of like the same thing it's like after release a pitch like you know sometimes they've already posted the photo mm -hmm. so it's like after a while it's like you can't really go back on it but as long as, as it had some kind of like good resolution to it yeah fine by it definitely i think i've generally done well <laughs> to find peace in that and accept that things are done when they're off my plate and that's it yeah and everything's like but, a learning experience too it's like yeah. if i have this like one thing that i don't think is perfect I can just build off that and like do better on the next one. I can do, I can like, I can throw a different type of fastball. I can mm -hmm. throw like a four seam up where it has no run, yep. but I'm just making them look stupid. Yeah. I, um, think, I think baseball is interesting in that like quantifiable effect because of the miles per hour. Such a, and yeah. I know there are other metrics that baseball players probably care about more, but miles per hour is a good surface one for idiots like me who aren't quite familiar with all the details of baseball. But it's like, yeah, you're very aware that you're throwing a 70 mile an hour, 70 mile per hour fastball in high school. And it's like, yo, I could hit 72 and that's great, but I'm still 20 miles, 30 miles below what yeah. I need. Like, yeah. Um, and, the, and the same thing too. It's like, um, when you when you're finishing a project or you're playing a show, you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Same thing in baseball. Like everything's unpredictable. Like you can watch a basketball game. It's like, okay, yeah, he's going to put up 30 points, but mm -hmm. you can have a guy who is all-star hitter, hall of fame bound. He goes over four. Yeah. Like, and it's the same kind of thing where it's like, even if he had a good game, it doesn't mean there's a good outcome. Yeah. Like he could still lose the game. So it's like, for me, I kind of, kind of like compare it to like, okay, if I'm playing a show, I think I did great. Um, but the set itself wasn't 
that bad or it wasn't that good mm-hmm. or we had a good set but i was off the same kind of thing you can't predict anything that's going to happen so there's always going to be those imperfections to even if you think everything's going perfect in uh in both of those there's the element of competition which i think is the other part of sports here that we've talked a lot about competing with ourselves but yeah. the key to baseball the key to soccer is that we're playing against another team there's someone else i'm looking at going no i'm better than you and i'm going to prove it to your face yeah and that was a tough yeah, that doesn't ex- that doesn't work in music. You can't be no. on stage with bands, and you can't be competing for stage time. But like that is that is my hard wiring. That is how I am wired. Yep. Um, are you the same? Yeah. How did you bring competition to um, music? How did you manage that problem? I mean, I never wanted to be competitive in music. Um, I mean, everyone's had their moments of like, "Fuck, that should have been me up there," or like, sure. "That should that should have been our set time," yeah. or "We should have been on the main stage." Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. Like, yeah. do your thing at the best, and then maybe you'll get that side time, you'll get that main stage time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think I'm more competitive in my, with myself, with yeah. anything, to where I'm always trying to one-up myself, or like, you know, I like I had this one good show this month, this one wasn't that great, but now I'm just like, I'm chasing that other show, mm-hmm. to where I'm like, I want to up one up myself on both of these. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not really like in sports, you want to one up your opponent, obviously, yeah. but I don't think there's really any such thing as an opponent in music. Cause yeah. you're all, you're all gunning for the same thing. You're all pretty much on the same team. Um, I, I can so, generalize there from music to art. Just, yeah. So I, I could put myself in the conversation too. and feel yeah. important. Um, but yeah, with cameras, it's like uh, with bands, it's like there are, there's no set amount of albums that can come out every year. There's no set amount of shows at your local venue. Like just yeah. because someone else on stage put out their record doesn't hurt you. And yeah, I think in the camera world, there's uh, a common flaw of people thinking there's a limited amount of bands. And it's like, if someone works with Dan, then I can't work with Dan. And it's like, no, Dan's going to need photos again in three months. Yeah. Dan might want to try someone new. Dan, I might fuck Dan over and Dan <laughs> might need someone. Or... There's 10 other bands that I just don't know and I haven't met yet. Just exactly. because I know this one band, like, I probably know 10% of the music scene. And I feel like I know every fucking band around here. And that's just not true. Like, every, yeah, every week there's a local show. And I'm like, who the fuck are half of these people? Yeah. Which is also, that's exactly, yeah. There's, just, there's like hundreds of other local bands that you've never unlimited. even heard of that have yeah. been around for like probably like more than five years. Yep. Um, or genres I haven't thought about a local scene yeah. before. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's definitely one of those things where like, there's so like you have like those like select few like local bands that have just have the magnification on them yep. where it's like, okay, like I have to keep working for them, but it's like, yeah. it doesn't mean like you're not going to be missing out on opportunities for like these other hundred bands that are coming yeah. out. Yeah. I think, um, the other challenge that I've had is like, one thing that's beautiful about sports to me is like, I can run as fast as I want. I will always run faster. if I'm chasing someone who's 1% faster than me. Yep. Like that's the fastest I can run is when I'm chasing that thing. And in the context of video, it's, that's a problem for me where it's like, I want to get good at this, but I think the best way to get good is to aim at someone better than me and compete with them. Yeah. But I don't want to compete in this. That's not a healthy thing. Yeah. Cause it's this weird cycle. Yeah. Cause in the end, you're just going to end up mimic, like mimicking them. You're yep. going to be doing, putting the same edits, the same and filters. Who and everything wants on that? Them. Yeah. So like you, you definitely want to chase them down, but you want to chase them down doing your own thing mm-hmm. to where it's like, okay, um, this photographer is doing this. He's been working with these other bands. His photos are sick, but like, I don't want to be like him. I want to be like Peter. Yeah. Like I, I want to be known as like Peter, like doing these photos at that speed. Yeah. You know? uh, I think I, there's a, I've been on a Macklemore kick lately. Just a wild one. Dude, I haven't listened to him in so long. Yep, same. And I, uh, Thrift I like, shop, dude. I use <laughs> incredible, incredible, <laughs> incredible. I know I use a uh, Spotify now, but I'm like, so like my, my music on my phone is just all the songs from before I started using Spotify. So when I put it on shuffle, it's just like everything through high school. Oh my God. And a Macklemore song here, but there's a, a lyric in it that was, uh, the greats weren't great because at birth they could paint. Uh, the greats were great because they paint a lot. And I, it was one of those things I found comfort in of like, Oh yeah, yeah. The goal isn't to be Steven Spielberg tomorrow. Like the goal is to just be Steven Spielberg every day. Yeah, <laughs> and do my thing to keep doing that every day in repetition. Uh, is that a similar thing for you in music, where it's like, uh, yeah, I think, I think music's hard because you're it's songwriting. It's not just get good at guitar. It's then use that good musical ability or drums or vocals. Yeah, because like just because you can play guitar or drums doesn't mean you can write a song. Right. Like for a long, I mean that was my thing for the longest time. Like I always felt comfortable on guitar enough to like try to write a song. Yeah. I would try to write the song, and it sound like shit, because I'm like I don't know like when I should bring back the chorus. I don't know how should structure should it be like A B A B C A B again, mm-hmm. or should it 
be like totally something different. So like I never really had a grasp on all that until probably like maybe two years ago. Yeah. And uh, you know, that's been playing guitar since fourth grade. What changed? How did you get that grasp? Just being around, I guess just being around people who are also like good at writing music, like especially, you know, all the times I've been to the studio, I always came back like after that trip and be like, okay, I feel inspired because I know how the, how their brain works like going to that so like I, i'm i'm always silently picking brains of people that mm-hmm. i'm around even if i'm not like yeah actively like saying like oh like how mm-hmm. do you do this i'm yep. always just like noticing how they do stuff so that was my big thing was like just noticing how other people like will have like the songwriting abilities like on display mm-hmm. i guess um i'm the same way i'm such a big question i'm like i'm I'm always nervous and I'm annoying people going, hey, what's that button do? How's this work? Why are you doing that? Yeah. It's like, I I'm, I don't want to be the one to ask, but like, I'm going to try to answer it myself in my head. Definitely. Definitely. Um, it's a fun transition <clears throat> there. A great segue to Chain Twist. So what you're doing now, yeah. I, I know, I think you're writing in that and you're involved in the creative process. Like, I think it's a lot of stuff done in-house there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you did then get that grasp on songwriting. Now I feel comfortable in it and you're kind of taking the reins on that. How's that process been? Um, honestly, really smooth. Yeah. To, to my surprise. Like I, I've never been the one that's like been ahead of a band before. Mm-hmm. Um, now me and our, our drummer, Ryan, um, I mean, we, we've been trying to make music for years now. Um, cause we, we started, we met at, he was a new employee at my job like years ago and we just <laughs> instantly hit it off. Cause like, yeah. it was one of those things. It's like, Oh, you're into this music too. Oh, sick. Like that's yeah. awesome. And now you just talk for hours. Yep. Um, but yeah, we always had the want to make music the want to make music together. Um, but we just both like life. <laughs> had, yeah. Life literally like I had in honor of call of home going, he had his own band going. Yep. He started a clothing line. He was busy with that. And then I think we really started talking about it over COVID mm-hmm. got lazy again. And then this past year we're like, okay, we really need to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's also a really good songwriter in himself too. So like, it was nice having like those, these two brains mesh together. Mm hmm. And that's when we made everything smooth. So it's like, okay, I had this like one song written like years ago. He would listen to it like, oh, I know what we need to do to this. Send it back. And it was mm-hmm. like, fuck, I never would have thought of that. And it sounds sick. Yeah. Um, so it's, def- it's definitely been smooth in that aspect too. Um, and as far as like, like we talked about before the camaraderie, like everyone in the band is like, dude, we're all like bros. It's, it's so sick. Like it, it's definitely the best chemistry I've had in a band in, in a very long time. That's awesome. So that also helped everything out pretty smooth too. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So what are you guys working on now? I know there's a couple of singles out, some songs out, or an EP out, I think. Uh, yeah, we put out two songs, um, and we kind of just grouped them together as just one release because they, you know, they kind of tied in together anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're gonna have like the same format of that going, like releasing, uh, maybe not at the same time we we'll did those two, but we're definitely gonna release like one song and then one song shortly after to group it together and then do a whole nother thing. Hell yeah. Uh, rather do like e- full EPs. Um, or albums because like it you know it, people nowadays they're they don't retain the interest like mm-hmm. especially me I, maybe a select few bands i could do that too but like yeah. i'll never listen to an album front to back yeah i always find myself by like song three just having it as background music then yeah um so we're gonna try to do that just get people more involved um that's that rap model i think i'm a I'm a, a weird blend, I think, where I think metalcore is still my home, but mm-hmm. most of what I listen to is bad SoundCloud <clears> rap, <throat> is what I've kind of lovingly called it. <laughs> Lately, it's gotten into UK Drill, which is a whole nother ballpark. Honestly, like, I, I've checked out some of that. It's pretty sick. It's, I'm not going to lie. It can be, but it's generally bad. But the reason I bring it up is because I think the... Uh, yeah, it's bad, but I love it. So what, what does it say about me? But the release model there, I think, is always fun of like, yeah, they, as an industry, at rap did well to say yeah. like, yeah, fuck this album. When we put out the album, we're going to have dropped eight of these songs before. So when the album comes, it's the fourth time they've dropped. We're going to just keep raking in these streams. And we had eight single releases to keep our name buzzing before. Yeah, it's just, in the end, it's just more content you're putting out. Yeah. Rather than, okay, we released an album two years go by until another single. Like, it's it's better, nowadays, better to release something like maybe every other month. Um, it could be like a three-song EP. It mm-hmm. could be um, three singles. Yeah. But in the end, it's like you, you want to keep the attention there. You don't want to like have a period of time of like downtime where it's like, OK, like we have an album out. We're going to be playing this one tour. We're going to be playing these shows like, OK, we'll have content for those. But it's not really stuff that people are going to actively care about. Yeah. Rather than as compared to like a new song coming out where it's a new experience. Um, and I think that's just the way music's going in general, not just like UK drill. But like maybe <laughs> like I've noticed that a lot of metalcore, like Bring Me the Horizon is a good example. Yeah. Um, Dave even publicly said they're not going to do albums anymore. They're going to interesting. I haven't seen that. Okay, like the post human. I think uh, the one that had like Parasite Eve. 
Um, that was its own release as an EP, but like now it's been all singles from them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I'm I think falling out of yeah out of the zone there. Um, but I think it's definitely like a better route to go in general, in my opinion, because like nobody's gonna care about a full album if you're still like a local band, like, and that's also gonna cost you thousands of dollars to do rather than you could do x amount of money for singles that's gonna be a lot cheaper and you're gonna get more music out that way how does that feel as an artist like i think part of the artistry was built on the idea of you write a you write a book and it feels like you're now releasing chapters of a book yeah which is a totally different experience it's a totally different thing you're offering the listener and it's a totally different thing for them to absorb as a yeah i'm not signing up for an hour-long journey of 10 15 songs whatever the heck the number was i'm signing up for a three minute (laughs) hopefully memorable experience and those are two very different things that you're not selling but you are selling it is a yeah how is yeah does it feel different do you have a preference there what's the yeah um i and again it goes back to like long like me not really listening to full albums like mm-hmm. that it's like you're gonna have your singles or you're gonna remember it's like okay yeah that song was sick like that chorus was so catchy on an album you're gonna have like four or five songs that are just like you're immediately gonna forget about and yeah. as an artist, you don't want that. Like, yeah. you're spending all that effort, time, and money to put out something like people want to remember and people are going to be actively engaged in. I don't want to have two songs that people are just going to forget about. Um, for the sake of playing devil's advocate, I think that you're probably right on that. And yeah. because I, I want to argue because it's more entertaining for myself. <laughs> um, but like, <laughs> want to fight, dude? <laughs> dude, good. <laughs> good. We are in a castle. Um, you're right. But goddamn, you know, like, white claw before you start and throw hands. Um, uh, um, I don't know what I was gonna say. It was something cool, probably. No, it wasn't. Um, I don't remember what we were talking about. I think you want you were saying something like playing devil's advocate, where it's like you want to argue the fact that like you don't want to put stuff out that people are eventually forget. Thank you. Yeah. Do you think I appreciate that you are better at my brain than I am sometimes? Dude, don't don't count um, on me ever. <laughs> It paid off that time. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> why are we here, dude? Dude, no, I don't know. Um, so, like, you... I guess my question was, like, do you think you can then predict what the single is? I think then the reason for putting out 12 songs is you put out the three singles, and I was hearing this talked about in the context of movies now, where, like, mm-hmm. you want to put out a movie with Brad Pitt in it because there's not DVD sales, so you can't get a cult following. So the only yep. way to sell a movie is in the box office, sort of. And I guess you can sell it streaming on the back end, but that doesn't to my understanding, quite compared to DVD sales. Yeah. I think in the context of an album, it's like you can release a single, but that doesn't mean that's the song that's going to latch on to people. It means you're going to put the most money into that. But what if song seven is the one that would have taken off? And in the Rolling Stones album, song seven did take off, even though they didn't promote it, but that's where people caught on and then they follow that. But now it's like you are almost pigeonholing yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's always kind of like a gamble, no matter what. Um, As far as like, because you can't predict singles. Mm-hmm. You can't predict, like, how well they're going to do, yeah. like, how well it's going to be received. But at the same time, like, bringing back that one-upping myself aspect, mm-hmm. it's like, no matter what single you put out, I'm always going to put out something that, like, I put more effort into mm-hmm. or, like, I had put more thought into mm-hmm. um, and wanted to be better than the other one. Mm-hmm. So, at, at, and, that's, and you're right. Like, there's a lot of albums where, like, Song X, mm-hmm. like, did well, but it was never a single on the radio yeah. or anything. But at the same time, it's like, how many albums had that happen That's, compared yeah. to like how many had that not happen to, you know? Definitely. So, I don't know. If for, for me especially, it's like I'd, if I look at it from personal aspect, aspects, I'd be more engaged like if a new single came out rather than like a whole album. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, like in the box office, so like whether it's like you can only sell in the box office or streaming services, like, yeah, at, at the same time, that kind of, I think that still kind of hurts the industry a bit because like not mm-hmm. everyone has access to like a netflix hulu or mm-hmm. whatever else you watch like i mean personally i don't fucking have those i think the i argument- mean i i mean i don't watch movies anyway but Same. like yeah um but yeah like there's gonna be people like that where like you know they're never gonna see if it's only on like mm-hmm. exclusively on netflix or box office because now everyone gets to movie theaters especially nowadays with like covid going around mm-hmm. and like even though we're a couple years past it like some there's still a lot of people who aren't comfortable going to the theaters Definitely. so it's like they, they'd probably almost rather buy it on DVD so they could watch it at their house, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, the other interesting layer that I heard them arguing was that, like, uh, it discourages people from taking a chance on a movie. And it discourages you from taking this crazy idea you have and being like, fuck it, let's put it out in the world and see if it yeah. latches on. Those people are now discouraged because, like, no, if it fails, we just blew 
uh, unlimited money <laughs> as yeah. opposed to just we can put a big name in here we can just remake a movie and now we know it's going to sell and we don't have to stress this and it might not it might not become avatar that can become number one but as long as we can just recoup our money life's good everyone moves on happy yeah and then and it's the same thing with like bands like trying new sounds trying new avenues mm-hmm. of their songwriting it's like yeah. i can have you know we could be known as like for the sake of just like putting out an example like we could be a metalcore band we'll have this one song that's going to be more like industrial mm-hmm. or more kind of like slower, but like that's something we want, we've always wanted to experiment on and maybe we want the attention on that, but we couldn't put it out as a single. Yeah. Now everyone's just going to like look over it and we're like, fuck now we're going to be stuck in this pigeonhole of being metalcore now. Like yeah. rather than like single after single, you can always try new things because yeah. it's like one release is not going to hurt you mm-hmm. in a way. I think the other thing you mentioned a minute ago is that like, my next release will be better than this one. And I think that's a similar sports thing. Something I've found a lot of comfort in is like, I can't get good tomorrow, but as long as I make everything 1% better than the last thing I did, it will be good. And in five years, I can't appreciate how much better that will be. And I, five years ago, couldn't have imagined the accumulation that I've gotten to now. And even now I'm looking at it going, ah, that stinks. I can, I can do better than that. And I'll continue to do that every day. And I think there's a, and and there are, and there are those artists who will like go just run through the motions of like, Mm -hmm. okay, we'll put out like, the same thing we put out. Yes. You know, I guess fail proof. Yeah. But I don't know. From my personal aspect, it's like I'm never going to put out something that's stagnant with the first. Yeah. You know, I'm always going to do something, whether it not say do something different, but like at least with my ability, something I probably could have done better with that. Yeah. And like build on that and make it to a whole, not a whole new thing where it's going to be like a foreign experience for someone, but like yeah. definitely it was like, oh wow, I could definitely tell like, it's different, but at the same time, it's a lot better. I can definitely relate to the sports thing there. Yeah. Where it's, yeah, I think that's where that, that skill set comes back and benefits me. Where it's like, I'm, I'm very comfortable admitting that a lot of people are better than me mm-hmm. and I'm interacting with them all day. And yeah. that's always going to be the case. And I think that sports are a very uh, direct way to remind yourself of that. And now in the creative space, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I still stink. I'm, I could be as great as I want and I still stink. And that's awesome. That means there's so much room to grow mm-hmm. always. Yeah. It's like you can be like, I could be the best pitcher in my league, but I go to another league and play. And there's gonna be like eight other people who just <laughs> yeah. make me look. I think like it's not shit. that big. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like and the world's a very big place. So like you're never gonna be the best at yeah. what you do, no yeah. matter what it is. Like because yeah. even the people who like you see as the best, there's definitely someone better than them too. Mm-hmm. And it's just like an ever never ending ladder going yeah. up to the top. Yeah. Um, wrapping it up, my guy. We're almost that time. Uh, yeah. So what's next? So where are we going from here? So you've got. 19 different forms of art that you're interested in. You've got 74 <laughs> different projects that you're involved in. Yeah. What are you working on now? What are you hoping continues into the next, into the future? Um, just getting new music yeah. out now. Um, we're definitely playing shows soon. Um, so whoever is watching this, be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, we're just staying busy, just trying to get stuff done for this next song that we're releasing. We have mm-hmm. another song that we're going to be recording next that I'm personally very excited about. Hell yeah. Um, It'll be out soon after that, too. So, yeah, we're just going to be pumping out stuff 2023. This episode will be out in the next couple days. Cool. So what are we promoting right now? Where can people find you? What should um, people follow, look out for? As far as the next couple days, we won't have anything out this quick. Fine. Um, in the next couple of weeks, definitely. But, yeah, you can find us everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music. What's the? YouTube. What do we look up? What do I type into the search bar? Chain Twist. Chain Twist. Chain Twist, baby. All right, my guy. Thank you for coming uh, out. Yeah. We did everything. All the recording still happened. The lights are still on. This is always a good sign. Yeah, right? (laughs) Nothing blew up, dude. Mission accomplished. Thank you for coming out, my man. No problem, man. Thank you. Bye.